Uh, let's bring in now for more reaction on that UN resolution, the government's uh, firm position in support of a ceasefire now and bring in Liberal front bench or former Liberal front bench and now uh, the uh, backbencher Julian Lisa. Julian, thanks so much for your time. This, this announcement, does it reflect simply the government falling in line with what is a growing sentiment that, as Joe Biden put it, the support for Israel has been strong but waning in the face of the ferocity of the the defence that they've put on and trying to destroy Gaza, uh, trying to destroy Hamas. Kieran, this is a sad day in the history of Australian foreign policy. Peter Dutton is right. This is a time for moral clarity and not for weakness. And what we have seen from the Prime Minister today is weakness. It has been capitulation to the Penny Wong doctrine on Israel. That is a doctrine of moral equivalence when it comes to Israel. The Prime Minister was right on the 16th of October when he moved a motion in the Parliament that was supported by Peter Dutton, a motion that was supported by the government and the opposition, a motion that defended Israel's right to defend itself. The only people that quibbled with that motion were the extremist Greens and some of the Teals. What we've seen today is a change in Australia's foreign policy. Australia calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. And what's the problem with calling for a ceasefire? Um, number one, it prolongs um, Hamas remaining in power. This is a war about removing an organisation from power that we have listed as a terrorist organisation for several years in our own country. An organisation that murdered 1,200 Jewish people, the largest murder of Jews on a single day since the Holocaust. That's captured, uh, killed, caged, raped, brutally dealt with uh, dozens of Jewish people and still has people held as hostages in Gaza. All this will do is keep Hamas in power. All this does is give Hamas time to uh, consolidate uh, and time to remain in power, and that is a bad thing for the region. So one has to ask, why has is the government the... made this change? Uh, the government has made yeah. this change because there has been a campaign in this country by the extreme Greens and their allies in inner city seats. Um, this is more about Graindler than it is about Gaza. So uh, you argue it's more a political position than a moral one. You've heard what Ed, Ed Husick and others have said, that they that every life is equal and, and that's the main argument being put by the likes of, of Mr Husick, but others in the Cabinet as well that have been arguing internally for this shift. Do you... you no do one you wants to see, see the loss the of any life. the argument that's been put in that sense? Kieran, no one wants to see the loss of any life, but uh, any life that is lost in this conflict is at the foot of Hamas. Hamas that uses um, innocent people uh, as human shields in this conflict. The Israel Defence Force um, has been clear before it has launched its operations, calling for people to move out of the areas where it is conducting its operations. Its operations are designed to remove a terrorist organisation that is responsible for the murder and kidnapping of its citizens, an organisation that we in this country for several years have listed as a terrorist organisation. Mm -hmm. The fact that there are people dying in Gaza is the fault of Hamas that is using their people as human shields. And this and support for this motion um, merely prolongs Hamas in power in Gaza. It merely allows Hamas uh, the time to rearm and increase its its foothold in Gaza rather than um, yeah. ensuring that Hamas's days are numbered. I, I understand and and one of the the, the points that I, I you don't often hear those like the Greens making, pro, the, those on the, the pro-Palestinian side like the, the Greens who have from the get-go been critical of Israel even before there was the retaliation. But there are more than 100 hostages that remain in place. Should the government have been focusing more on that and demanding a surrender as opposed to a ceasefire? Uh, there needs to be a return of the hostages. There needs to be an acknowledgement of the terrorist attacks that occurred on the 7th of October. There needs to be a complete disarming of Hamas. I support the two-state solution, Kieran. I, I absolutely do. It's fundamental, in my view, to the future um, of the Middle East. But you have in Hamas an organisation that does not support the two-state solution, that not only supports Israel being wiped from the map, but supports the murder of Jews everywhere. 
That's the problem with what we're dealing with. And signing up to a resolution uh, that calls for a ceasefire allows that organisation to strengthen its foothold rather than seek, as the Americans are doing, and even as other small democracies like Papua New Guinea are doing, uh, to try to see the removal of Hamas uh, from Gaza. Liberal MP Julian Lisa, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you.